all I know. <laughs> yes, sir. When you left like the Howard Stern show, you've been there for a while. Did you leave with like any animosity towards Howard or? No, you know, I asked I asked for more money, but I my problem was I was completely fried. And it was too good a job to say I quit. Like it's like if somebody said, Jackie, do you want to go work for a week in Alaska? I wouldn't say no. I'd say five billion dollars. And then when they say no, I said, ah, I guess you don't want me for the gig. So it was like, I didn't really do that. I just want to, I made a deal with myself, all right, if I can get a million dollars a year, I'll, I'll stay here. But as stupid, you know, it, it makes me laugh so hard. Because the problem was, I couldn't go to sleep. And I had to be up at 4.30 in the morning, five days a week. And I was so tired all the time, because I couldn't make myself go to sleep. It'd be 10 o'clock at night. Instead of going to sleep, my wife and I would watch Law and Order. Or we'd watch, uh, whatever, ER. And anybody with any brain would have tape recorded the show and watched it the next night. And then they'd tease something in the news, and next thing you know, it's 11.30, and by Wednesday, I'd be ready to kill somebody. So I'm a multimillionaire, walking around, angry at the world. Then Saturday would come, I'd get a little sleep, and then Sunday, I, it, everybody always tells me I'm so dramatic. Sunday, I'd walk outside on Sunday. It was like Dorothy walking out of the house into Oz. Like, Jesus Christ, the world's in color. Because after a little bit of sleep, I was like a different world. And then they'd offer me so much goddamn money to do stand-up on the weekends. I'd work all week, then go do stand-up on the weekend. That's time to start again. So I was so goddamn fried. But they made it like it was a big world. There was no world war. It was like, ask for more money. They said no, and that was that. You know, but they, they, they still took... They, it's ten years later, I called in the show on Thursday, and he's still yelling, "Yeah, you should have never left the show." You drop it. It's ten fucking years, you know. But it's still funny. It's a great piece of meat. But you know, but I'd have to call my friend. I have a radio show, and it's on Howard One Hundred One. You know, so how much animosity is I got a show on this channel? You know, we had. But you know, I told him, "Hey, I'll come back on the show." And the, the thing that's so ironic is, I'm old. I'm sixty-three, and all I want to do. He's take a nap. <laughs> so somebody said, all right, here's the, here's the deal. You, we're going to pay you a million dollars a year, but you have to take a nap every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I, you know, I'd come home exhausted, and instead of going to bed, I'd get behind the computer. You know, email was new. You know, oh, here's, a, here's one from Japan, you know. Time to go to sleep, time to wake up, time to go to sleep. It just got crazy. You know, Jackie, apparently you're not alone in that, obviously. Did anybody read today about Meredith Vieira and Matt Lauer looking to leave the Today Show? They make millions of dollars a year. They probably have to get up in three. They are tired of getting up of the grind of 15 years, and I believe it, of getting up at three and being on the air at, at five or six. There is, there is, it, it sounds crazy, but you do not have a life. You're not parallel to the rest of the world. And it sounds crazy, you know. Yeah, I, just read it, I just read it today, and that's, did anybody else read it? It was in Newsday. Just heard it on, yeah, you heard it on the radio, same thing. Right, that that would be a, a you know. You only get to live once. I said, I don't, you know, and but I'm such a hypocrite, because if they had gave me the money, I'd have still been there, so I'm so I'm a little bit full of shit. But, but the thing is, I, I just tried to draw a line in the sand for myself, because, but you can't, all the money in the world, you can't buy sleep. And you're just on a different time zone. You know, all of a sudden it's Friday night and you're rich and famous and fun and all you want to do is go to sleep. Or, but, I, you know, there was, I'd be headlining in Las Vegas. And I'd get up at 4.30, do the Stern Show. If you left for Las Vegas after noon in the early 90s, there were no direct flights, so you had to go through Phoenix, hope that you're not delayed, come to Las Vegas. My show started at 10. But it wasn't 10, it was 1 o'clock. So I had got up at 4.30, and I'm going on stage at 1 o'clock. I'm making $20,000, but I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, go fuck yourself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but who could say no? You know, if you did the show enough times for $300, and all of a sudden somebody says, here's 20 grand, I'm going. I'm going to prop you up with a stick. I'm going up there and saying dick, you know? <laughs> but it was, it was very crazy, you know? I mean... It's so funny. I mean, Howard's been doing it forever, but he has always been able to go to bed at 8 o'clock. You know? I said, listen, you are a very rich, very famous, very powerful gerbil on a wheel. <laughs> and, and that, 
like it or lump it, that's that's what it is. You know, you you know, it's it's never ending, never ending, never ending. And I, I would love to talk to Matt. You know, Matt Lauer. That's too long. We we did a show for Channel Five. This is so long ago. This is like in 1987. We did five pilots for Channel Five that never got aired. They were horrible. But the opening of the very first show was Fred. Norris was the other writer. Me and him were dressed in work clothes, and the, the premise is it's going to be the Howard Stern talk show. And so Fred and I are sitting at work in in like a a place, you know, like a, a, a storage facility. We get a phone call. We say okay, and we take a box, the big box that looks like a coffin, and we go and we take a body, you know, and we take the nice looking body and put it in this box and we carry it up. 20, uh, like a hundred flights of stairs, so we're carrying it. We filmed this all day, you know, floor 30, floor, floor 45, floor 73 and a third, you know, same shit. We get almost to the top and we're taking a rest and a pretty girl waves to us and we both wave and the thing bounds all the way down and we have to pick it up and, and the premise being that the good looking guy after falling a hundred stories, then we came up, this is all pre-recorded and pushed, pushed it into the live studio so then the night of the show, we push the box into the studio and open up the box and Howard Stern walks out. But the funny part of the story is the body that we loaded into the coffin was fucking Matt Lau. <laughs> it was like 1986, which is so funny, you know. But that, that's a start. I got to write him an email and say, hey, Matt, you woke up, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, he made a few more they dollars than me. They're all over 50. Meredith Vieira, Matt Lau are probably... Katie Cor all, all them, because right. I mean, the girls, it's one thing to get up and have to be sitting there. People say, how are you funny at 6 in the morning? You give me a cup of coffee, you, you know, I, you know, I'm fine while I'm sitting there drinking coffee. You know, when I get, I, then you get in your car and drive home an hour and you walk in and you bite your wife's head off. You know what I mean? Because you, you crash down. But a woman, they, they have to get up at 3, and they, you know, at 9 o'clock in the morning, they got to look. And her makeup, her keys, like, mm. So it's crazy. Are you happy now? I was happy till I met you, and now <laughs> I'm thrilled. I got a 40 year old girlfriend. Don't show her my birth certificate. Um, and I got all these silly projects going that I just love. And you know, I live alone. I got a house on the beach in Babel. I got a small apartment in the city. Got my own radio show. I commute at night. You know, I quit smoking pot. I quit drinking booze 10 years ago. I uh, it it makes and the <laughs> The people on the Stern Show drives them crazy because I said, I'm leaving this show and I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is it's not going to involve getting up at 4.30 in the morning. And to this day, you know, if I look at my alarm, like once in a while I get up to do OB and Anthony or do the Stern Show or to do a film shoot and I have to get up at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock and like, that's all I need to remind me. I'm like, you son of a bitch, you know. Like I had to get up the other night. I had to go. I, I'm taking acting classes. I got done at 11 and had to drive to Philly. I got to Philadelphia, got to my hotel room at 1, and had to get up at 6 for the shoot. But I could do that. I could do that. I could probably do it for a month. But not for 15 years. You know, you do it once. It's like fun. You tap a little coffee, and I know the next day I'm sleeping in. You know, it's, it's fun. You get up early to go fishing. You know, I don't want to go fishing every day for 15 years. You know? But yeah, you know... Life's an adventure. It's fun. I got lucky and made a few dollars, so I don't have to worry about feeding myself, and my house is paid for. So, you know, I I don't have children. I wish I had children. I don't wish I had them in this world, but I wish I had. Period. And you know, and I'm at the point where I'm you know doing charity work and, and helping other people. So, and that's you know, I like making people laugh. If I if I'm on. Do, there's no greater job than I had because I like to make people laugh. And I would write something and put it in front of Howard and five seconds later, 20 million people would laugh. It doesn't get any better than that. If you write for a movie, you write a movie script, they don't laugh for two years. You write a TV show, they don't laugh for six weeks. If you're a comedian, you write something and you try it out that night in your act, hours later, or if you write something in the green room, it's this is like boom, 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 bang, Boom, 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 bang. It was, you know. And then somebody called up and says, How? That's the funniest thing you ever said. And I'm sitting there like, Yeah, I wrote that 30 seconds ago. You know what I mean? It doesn't get better than that. But 